Welcome to this educational module. We would like to share some practical tips to help you move better. Today I'm going to talk about freezing triggers and what to do about them. But first we need to know what freezing actually is. As you're walking, your steps get progressively shorter to the point where you start stutter stepping and then you cannot continue walking. You're kind of stuck. Now, just because you have Parkinson's doesn't mean that you're going to end up with freezing problems. But people that have freezing problems also have a range. They can have mild freezing where it's more of a nuisance in the course of their day. Or there's other people that freezing is very disruptive in their walking, making it very difficult for them to walk. In this video, we're going to discuss five key areas. First are the common aggravating factors. What is it that you're doing that might be regularly aggravating your freezing or precipitating it? Then what are the mechanics on how to stop a freeze? So there's step-by-step -step maneuvers that you can try to help reduce your freezing or at least shorten the length of time that you're stuck in a freeze. Then we're going to talk about freezing triggers. These are things that you encounter that will precipitate a freezing episode. So we're going to talk about the different freezing triggers and what you can do about them. So problem and solution kind of approach. We're going to discuss shoes and what kind of shoes can actually aggravate your freezing and what you can look out for in your shoe wear to help reduce freezing. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at a few walker considerations. There are two universal walking characteristics that will set you up for freezing. The first one is taking small steps. Simply think of taking small steps as food for freezing. There's many ways you can compensate in trying to take bigger steps. And one of them is walking to music. Another one is through attention strategies and the other one is through visual cues. All three of them are on my website at www.parkinsonspt.com. Then there's rushing. Rushing will set you up into a freeze because when people rush, typically the momentum of their body, their shoulders are a little bit ahead of their feet. So that brings you up onto your toes more quickly and throws you off balance and precipitates a freezing episode. The thing with rushing is it's something that's ingrained. It's in your personality. You've been rushing your whole life or you're a type A personality and you have to do things quickly. This I have found to be one of the most difficult areas to treat because, because it's part of the person's makeup. But you should know that rushing is an aggravating factor. So if there's any way you can slow yourself down, that would be helpful and in your best interest. Now we're going to discuss the mechanics on how to stop a freeze. It's a four step process and the first step here is simply try and stop. If you try and plow through it, it's just going to make it worse. So number one, stop. And this is a video that shows you you're freezing and you stop. You don't try and go any further. Step two is getting your heels down so the pressure isn't on the front part of your feet and then once you get your heels down if you need to is straighten up a little bit more so there's even pressure throughout the bottom of your feet so here we are we're freezing then heels down then the next step is shifting your weight you need to shift your weight in order to take a step and there's different maneuvers that you can do in order to shift your weight. One of them is first pausing and then taking a big step. That's more for people that tend to rush or once you're stopped, the first step is a big step and that helps you shift your weight. Marching in place is another way that you can get your shift, your weight off the foot that you want to take a step with. Sidestepping or you can take a step backward and then start walking. The idea is to shift your weight off the opposite foot long enough to allow yourself to take a step. So this is, you've stopped, you get your heels down, 
Now, this person's marching in place. That's an option. You don't have to do that one before you take your first step. Now, here's a video just showing you how your weight shift can affect the size of your step. This is an experiment that I want you to try at home just to demonstrate that if you don't shift your weight far enough to the side, then your step size is going to be smaller. So we're going to start out with your shoulders about three inches from the wall and you're going to take a big step forward and you're going to take a big step back and then feet even. Now what you're going to do is get closer to the wall so that your arm and shoulder is essentially leaning against the wall. Now you're going to try and take a big step forward and then now you're going to try and take a big step back. So in the last situation, I wasn't able to shift my weight as much as I needed to. As a result, my step size was a lot smaller. If it's hard for you to shift your weight because your feet are close together and any kind of weight shift makes you unsteady, you probably need a walker to help you with walking to reduce your freezing and to make you more stable. The last step in getting out of a freeze is making sure your first step is a big step so you don't right away go into another freeze. So here's the whole sequence. You stop, get your heels down, you're shifting your weight, whatever method you want to use, and then your first step is a big step. And that's the whole series on how to get out of a freeze. Some people tend to freeze more in crowded areas. And what you may want to try to do is focus on your feet instead of the people around you. So you're focusing on taking big steps. And sometimes holding, if you're with somebody, holding onto their arm just so you feel more stable. The anxiety of being around other people can precipitate a freeze. So try and armor yourself with what makes you feel more safe. Now we're going to talk about the six freezing triggers. The first one is start hesitation. So that's whenever you attempt to start walking. Then there's destination hesitation. That's when you're going somewhere in the room and you want to go to the sink. So your destination is the sink. Or you're walking to a chair you're going to sit down in. Your destination is the chair. The next freezing trigger is thresholds. So anything where you're going through a doorway kind of scenario is considered a threshold. The other trigger is dual tasking. So you're walking and you're doing something else and that can trigger a freeze. So off freezing is when your Parkinson's medications have worn off and you start freezing more and that's called off freezing. And then turns, that's a typical trigger for people to freeze and we'll talk about that. So the first freezing trigger is start hesitation. We're going to look at this video so you can kind of get an idea of what that is. So when he starts walking, you'll see that he's taking kind of small steps, a little bit of stutter stepping. And then once he gets going, he's okay. This individual Again, starting out a little bit differently than the other one, but once he gets going, it's okay. And with that last one, you can see he was try trying to shift his weight a little bit more, but it was hard for him to do so. And that's what start hesitation looks like. With start hesitation, it has a lot to do with shifting your weight far enough in order to take the first big step. So when you stand up, you want to first pause, make sure the weight's distributed over your feet, and then your first step's a big step. So the next freezing trigger is destination hesitation. So you're going to be hesitating as you're getting closer to that chair. In addition to approaching the chair, the person has to turn 180 degrees to sit down in that chair, which turning is another freezing trigger. So here's a video to show this guy already approached the chair. He's having trouble turning. And there was a pause before he started turning because he was having some hesitation at the destination, which was the chair. And then there's other people that because they have so much trouble getting closer to the chair, 
that they just sit prematurely. It's just easier for them to do that. Also, oftentimes people with Parkinson's will see objects as being closer than they actually are. So I think that just adds to the difficulty of not getting close enough to the chair prior to sitting. One option as you approach the chair is thinking about your feet to maintain bigger steps and not about the chair as you're approaching it. And with people that have mild freezing, this is all they need to do to rectify that problem. Another option for destination hesitation is to approach the chair from the side. By doing that, you reduce the amount of turning from 180 degrees to only 90 degrees, which in and of itself can be helpful. So this individual, he's just walking past the first leg of the chair, and then he's turning and he'll pivot in. And this video demonstrates that. Also, the left leg of that person is against the seat. They know they're there. They put their hand on the armrests so they don't have to worry about being too far away from the chair before they sit down. Here's a similar situation, but somebody that is using a walker, and you can see the trouble that he has with the direct approach as opposed to the side approach. It looks a lot safer and he's closer to the chair before he sits down. Another approach to help with the shifting of the weight and the freezing is to sidestep to your chair. This isn't a common approach that people use, but if you're trying to find a way that works for you, this might be one option that works better for you than the other options. Now we're gonna talk about the freezing trigger um, thresholds. So this individual has a little trouble going through a threshold. A little hesitation there. He stops and then tries to take a little bigger step as he goes through. You'll see he kicks that left leg a little bit. A little tap. I don't know if you saw that. He made a little tap with his foot. And what he was really supposed to do was take a step back with his foot and then start with a big step, which is what he should be doing to help with his freezing. So the sequence of this is, if he's, this is a more severe freeze, and so you're up on your toes and then you're catching yourself on the door frame. Probably looks familiar for some of you. Then what you wanna do is get your heels down, that same sequence that we did earlier on. But now what you're going to do, you're gonna take a step back with one foot and that gets your weight back instead of that on your toes that helps shift your weight. And then the foot that you step back with, that's the foot you should start walking with. So if you step back with the right foot, then you start walking with a big step with the right foot. So it's always the same foot that you're stepping back with. Here's a close up of the freezing and the stepping back by a doorway. You're freezing, get those heels down, step back, and then take a step, big step forward. Now, it would be good if you took a bigger step back because that ensures you shift your weight back better and that gets you out of the freeze a little bit better. And then here's just a more complete view on your toes. You stop, heels down, take a step back, big step. So that's what you do in thresholds or doorways. The next freezing trigger is walking while dual tasking. So you could be walking and talking, or you could be walking and doing something on your phone, or you could be walking and carrying something. So it's doing walking plus one other activity, whatever that activity is. And that can affect your freezing. So here, let me just show you what that can look like. So he's not talking. He's doing good. Only the only charge only for 
Go to your home. Oh, I know. It's worth it like seventy dollars just to come to your house. No, when I when when I know the problem, I put them on my my laboratory or the or the bathroom. I should put two hundred dollars for something or nothing. Oh, uh, that's a bit much. I said, me too. Now you're focusing on your walking? Okay, don't say anything. Good. So you see that when he's focusing on his walking, his steps are really looking good. And when he does start talking, he doesn't actually come to a freeze. But the concern is when your steps get shorter, is you're setting yourself up for a freeze. There's a wide range of interventions for this kind of problem. So really ideally what I would recommend is seeing a physical therapist who's familiar with freezing and this kind of problem and have them evaluate you because it's very individual what your needs may be. And that way you will be more successful ultimately to deal with this problem. So next we're gonna talk about off freezing, which technically isn't a freezing trigger, but I do want to discuss it briefly because um, there's some things you can do about it. So off freezing is freezing that you get when your medicine has worn off and then you tend to freeze. But when you take your medicine and it starts working, your freezing goes away. So off freezing is receptive to visual cues. So if you're walking and you get stuck, you start freezing. If somebody places their foot in front of yours and you, you can simply step over it, it's a visual cue. So there is a place on my website that um, covers visual cues under walking and you can look at different options that you can use for your freezing and improving your stride length. Now we're gonna talk about the last freezing trigger and that's during turns. So whenever you're turning, you start freezing. And there's a lot of dynamics involved with turns and that's on my website uh, under the walking tab and you can slide down and there's a section on turns. And I think that would be very helpful for anybody that has a tendency to freeze uh, with turns. And you know, some people have difficulty with turns and don't freeze, so I think it might be worthwhile taking a look at that. So anyways, um, here's an individual who I've seen in therapy. I'm gonna show you uh, the picture that she looks like, or the video that she looks like before we instructed her on what she needed to do. So she's, she's pausing a bit, and then she got started again. Now here she's, she's trying to shift her weight off that left foot, but she's not doing enough shifting to really unload that left foot. So you see how shifting your weight really is important. Then she gets stuck again a little bit. And again, she's not shifting her weight enough with that turn. So there's a lot of dynamics involved with turns and uh, what we did is we reviewed with her. We spent like five minutes discussing with her and practicing turns, increasing her weight shift. That was the one thing that we covered. And then taking a bigger step with the outside foot. So you're, when your feet are making a turn, the foot on the outside needs to take a bigger step. So you can see how she does. So she's taking bigger steps in general and then bigger step with that left foot going on the outside of the turn. She's weight shifting better. We told her she needed to weight shift more. So this is a dramatic difference with the before and after. It took maybe five minutes to review it with her. She never knew that she needed to shift her weight more. She didn't realize she had to take a bigger step with her outside foot. But the main thing that really affected her the most was her level of attention to her feet. She really had to focus on her feet. And if she was distracted, then she would start freezing again. So as long as she was focused, it worked out well for her.
but because she was so easily distracted, she really did need a walker to help her with her walking so she would be stable. I thought it would be fun and take a look at this person and, and analyze him as far as, is he doing anything that would be a freezing trigger? And is there anything else in addition to the freezing triggers that we talked about that he could be doing differently so he's safer when he's walking? So one thing that I like is he's got a shoulder bag. So he's putting some stuff in there. So technically it's supposed to allow your hands to be free, but he has taken the opportunity to fill his hands, which is not a safe thing to do because if he froze or lost his balance, then his hands are full and there's no hand free to catch yourself. It looks like he's in a rush. He's trying to eat. He's looking at his watch. So rushing is one thing that we know is another trigger for freezing. Now turning, turning his body while he's stepping forward with his feet could really precipitate a freeze. So this is something that if you need to turn around and look at something, it would be good to stop first and then look around. <laughs> Oh my God, don't answer the phone. He's doing it. Okay, so he's walking and talking on the phone. This is not a good combination. So if the phone rings, either ignore it, which is hard to do, I know, or stop walking and pick up the phone. Or before you go on a walk, turn your phone off. That's another option. So he finishes up with a big gulp, and so he's not seeing where he's going. He hasn't seen where he's been going for most of his walk. So this is just a fun thing to look at, kind of see what he's doing, and think about if you're doing any of these things yourself, so you can work on correcting it. If you're a person that freezes, the soles of your shoes may make a big difference in terms of causing you to freeze more or causing you to catch more or anchoring you down and causing you to lose your balance. So what I would recommend for people that tend to freeze a lot is to try to avoid any like running type of shoes where the rubber of the soles is softer rubber and there's ridges. The ridges will really sink into the carpeting and catch and anybody that freezes a lot and has tried walking on carpeting with running shoes knows what I'm talking about. So this is a bad combination, but I would look around your home and see if you have any shoes that don't have deep ridges, that don't have soft rubber and try them out and see if they work better for you. Another option that you can try is bringing your, your favorite shoes into a shoe repair place. And what they can do is they can put either a leather or a hard material that won't grab so much. And they replace the front half of the sole uh, with that material so that your feet don't catch so much. So you want to have the, the leather or whatever material far back enough so it covers the area where the ball of your feet are. So the, the edge of it should be like about the beginning of your arch. And some people that I've recommended this to are worried it's like, okay, well, then I might slip and fall. Slips typically occur from the heel, but trips typically occur from the front of the foot. Uh, trips or your feet catching because of how your walking is when you freeze you're typically more on your toes but if you can glide through a freeze a little bit more easily then it won't be as abrupt and it'll be a lot safer. I've had some individuals uh, with three-wheeled walkers that freeze a lot and those three-wheeled walkers have a larger bag in it. I don't know if you can see that here but the bag almost covers the whole inside of the walker. And for this person, the bag was actually a visual trigger for her to freeze. So let me just show you a difference of with the bag. Okay. 
And then we took the bag away and that eliminated that visual trigger and that helped a lot with this person. So just, just something else to think about. Uh, if you have this kind of walker and you're freezing a lot, try taking the bag away and see if that helps. It allows you to just move about more freely. So in general, people that have had four-wheeled walkers with hand brakes, I usually tell them if you freeze, you squeeze. Because if you freeze, your feet are no longer advancing, but the walker can, and that can cause you to lose your balance. So what I've done with people in therapy is um, stop and go drills. So we'll walk and I'll say stop. And before they stop their feet, I want them to squeeze the brake. So that's something you can try at home. Do some stop and go drills. So you get some more practice so that when you do freeze, your hands are right away gripping the hand brakes. So in summary, rushing in small steps will make you freeze more easily. So if you can slow down and take bigger steps that will keep you away from getting triggered more easily into a freeze. When you start walking, try to make your first step a big step. Because if you start out with a big step and then you end up taking smaller steps, then you have a little bit more leeway. But if you start out with a small step, you kind of have nowhere to go before you start freezing. Your feet require more of your attention to reduce freezing. And that really varies from one individual to another. There's some people that can be distracted and do fine. And they're just triggered by some of the triggers we discussed today. And then there's other people, if their attention is diverted at all from their feet, they tend to freeze. And those individuals most likely will need an assist device. In general, learn what triggers your freezing and look for a solution that can help you. And then lastly, find shoes that reduce your feet from catching. Thank you.